Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. Love to see you back for another one. Onward with our Linux journey. And in this video, we're gonna talk all about Vim. In fact, actually, there's gonna be several videos that's gonna be dedicated on Vim. And we'll talk a little bit about what Vim is. We're gonna talk about why it's important. If you're planning on pursuing a career in tech or engineering, it is absolutely vital that you understand what Vim is and how to use it. Now, before we jump into things, make sure you go ahead and give me a like for the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. Hitting that bell will allow you to be notified whenever we upload to the channel because you want to stay up to date. Lastly, make sure you share the video with a family member or friend so that way they can learn about the topic. One last item before I forget, make sure you check out the description as we're always updating the description with all the latest and greatest information. So with housekeeping out of the way, Let's jump into learning about Vim. Before we jump into Vim, time for a quick story. So that way we can set the stage of how I even got introduced to Vim. I had the privilege of working with a really smart engineer and till this day, I will never forget him. Steve, if you're out there watching my video, shout out to you. Thank you so much for all the guidance you've given me as I transitioned into a young engineer all the way to where I am today. Here I am in Steve's team and I'm starting to learn about development work and I'm working on a military product. And the interesting thing, we were developing in a Linux environment. Now I'll never forget, Steve came up to me and he said, all right, Lewis, what is your choice of editor? I remember looking at Steve and looking at him kind of funny, like, what do you mean my choice of editor? And he said to me, yeah, what do you use? I mean, you have to edit text, right? I mean, we are in a development environment and he can tell that I was just looking at him kind of funny as if I had no idea what he was talking about. He basically said to me, Hey, how much experience do you have working in Linux? And I told him very little because in college we touch on it briefly. We don't spend too much time. At least that was the curriculum back in the day. Today, maybe a little bit different. After about a couple of minutes of Steve making fun of me because I didn't know what a text editor was in the Linux world, he was kind enough to take me under his wing and said, hey, look, I'm gonna teach you some things and this is gonna serve as the basic foundation for you in your career, especially from a development perspective. And he gave me two options. He said, hey, I want you to either choose between Vim or VI, and we'll talk a little bit about the differences between the two, or I want you to choose Emacs. And we won't talk about Emacs for today, but just know that those are the two editors that he gave me in order to choose. And I asked him, which one do you recommend? And he was a very big fan of Emacs. So after he gave me his recommendation, I decided to go on Google and see what the differences was between the two. Now there was a lot of good blogs and a lot of things that explained the differences between the two and all the features. But ultimately, my decision came down to VI or Vim. And the reason why I chose that was because the common thing that I found in all the articles that I was reading was that VI or Vim is everywhere. It's always included in all distributions. I knew at that time that if I learned this one particular tool, I never have to worry again. What if I don't have a text editor that I'm familiar with? What if it's not in my environment? How would I get up to speed and start editing text or doing different tasks that require a text editor? And I had to work with a whole new editor every single time because I didn't know the basic foundations of a text editor that was included in every single distribution for Linux. So that made my choice and that started the journey of me learning about VI and Vim. First question in most people's mind are, well, what is VI or Vim? So Vim, which stands for VI Improved, is a highly customizable text editor that is an extended version of the original text editor, which is VI. And VI itself was created by Bill Joy for the Unix operating system around 1976 as part of the BSD or Berkeley software distribution. Bill Joy was paramount in order to make sure that we have the necessary tools back in the day in order to be able to manipulate text files. But if it wasn't for the great work that he did, we wouldn't have what we have today. Around the 1990s, there was a gentleman by the name of Bram Molinar. And if I mispronounce his name, I do apologize. Again, I was never really good with naming. But Bram was so instrumental into bringing improvements into VI where he took the original text editor and made a whole lot of improvements to it because he saw a lot of deficiencies. And it's quite unfortunate too because I remember getting a notification a couple of months ago that Bram had passed away in 2023. Now, a big thank you to Bram for his contributions to society, and hopefully he can rest in peace. Now, Bram, who was a Dutch programmer, he started working on ways in which we can improve VI 
in order to extend its functionality. Not only did he add features over the years, but those features extended the functionalities of VI, plus it retained a lot of the efficiencies that were originally designed in the program. Now, fun fact, Vim was released to the public in 1991. Ever since its release date over the years, Vim gained huge popularity because of all the extra features. It was so popular among developers and administrators because of its powerful features, robust plugins, and its adherence to the Unix philosophy. Do one thing and do that one thing very well. Become the best text editor you can possibly have. By now, without going too much into detail, you should have a basic understanding of what Vim and VI is. So just to recap, VI is your text editor and it's really the OG and Vim can be thought of as a fork of VI, but it does stand for VI improved. So now you know a little bit about the history between VI and Vim. Now you may be asking, okay, well, what are the differences between the two? And one of the first things that we can jump into is the user interface between VI and Vim. Now from a Vim perspective, Vim has a more modern and customizable user interface compared to VI. Vim supports features like syntax highlighting, multiple windows, split screens, and mouse support, which VI lacks. Another key difference between VI and Vim is that Vim offers extended commands. Vim provides additional commands and functionalities beyond what VI offers. These include built-in support for searching and replacing with regular expressions, built-in spell checking, and support for macros amongst others. Commands that you will not see in regular VI. Now let's talk a little bit about customization. Vim offers extensive customization options through its configuration file, which is vimrc, and supports for plugin. Users can customize key bindings, color schemes, and even the behavior to a much greater extent compared to VI. And as you just saw my vimrc, you can see all the different settings that I have in there. And once vim loads, it actually reads my vimrc, which is my settings, and it applies them immediately upon start. Another key difference between VI and Vim is that Vim offers additional modes. For those who are new and are learning about VI or Vim for the first time, additional modes may not make sense, but over time, you'll see the differences of what these modes are and what they allow you to do. While VI and Vim offer modes like normal, insert, command, just to name a few. Vim introduces additional modes like visual mode for text selection and operator pending mode for performing operations on text objects. Now, one last difference that I wanna talk about between VI and Vim are the additional features that you get with Vim. Vim offers the following key features, which by the way, are not included with VI. And you'll quickly see why Vim was a big upgrade from VI. Some of those features include syntax highlighting for various programming language, auto indentation, file encryption, and support for various file formats, such as Unicode, just to name a few of those features. Now, when you use Vim, you're going to get faster performance, and it is generally more efficient than VI. All these performance increases, you're going to get them because of the optimization and the performance improvements that have been done over the years. Now, the last thing that I'll close with, and I promise this is the absolute last thing when it comes to VI and Vim, but fun fact, when you're working in Linux, most distributions nowadays, if you say you wanna work with VI and you type that into the command, there's actually a pointer that goes to Vim. So by you typing in VI and hitting enter, it's actually gonna launch Vim because that's typically the standard nowadays. At this point, you should have a good understanding of what VI is you should understand what Vim is, a little bit about the history, a little bit about the key features. And as you guessed it by now, we are starting our journey with learning this text editor. And again, this is ubiquitous across multiple Linux distribution. So you can feel comfortable knowing that if you learn this tool, you can go to any distribution and not worry about what text editor you can use because typically there will always be a version of Vim on there. Now stay tuned for additional content as we continue to break down Vim. And again, this is a very critical tool in order to learn. So we are going to learn how to work with it, how to be efficient with it. And more importantly, I'll teach you a trick or two of how to be a wizard when it comes to Vim. So that'll do it for this video. Make sure you go ahead and give me a like for the video if you found it to be helpful. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that notification bell so that way you're notified when we upload to the channel. And lastly, share the video with a family member or friend 
so that way they can learn this important tool and apply it to their career in tech or engineering if they're already in it. And if they're not, I guarantee you they will get a head start compared to everybody else. So I'll see you all in the next video.